Welcome to Seizing Valor, where we discover God's path for manhood one conversation at a time. I am Zach. I am Joe. And I am your father. Just kidding. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm your friend. I'm not your father. You, you'd be a good but, dad. You know, oh, you do you. plenty of dad jokes. Uh, I feel like I'm the I only do. person that succeeds you in the world as far as dad jokes and anti jokes are concerned. Yeah. Without Josh, there's no one here to, to curb our, our dad jokiness. I know. So, but we, we learned from the best, didn't we? Yes, we did. Oh, he's the one who's actually a dad. So that's. <laughs> and we're the ones. We just provide the jokes. But. So speaking of uh, I am your father and lines from famous media today, we're uh, we're going to take a different route. We're going to do uh, we're going to do what we're calling podcaster picks. So we are going to give a little pick of things that we've been watching, I guess, or that we enjoy or we find, I guess, inspiring or whatever you want to say. Uh, like we're going to talk about uh, each a podcast, a movie and a TV show. Um that we just like or we like the themes or, or something like that just to kind of give you guys some recommendations of like what we think is worth looking into and yeah that's just that's what we're gonna do today yeah i'm excited about this because it's a nice uh change of pace from what we usually do with talking a little bit more serious topics mm -hmm. i don't even know i might go into serious topics with this uh we'll see because mm. it's all impromptu off the cuff today all right yes it is we are gonna we're just gonna spit them out there we don't even know what the other person's gonna say like in terms of what they picked no, so i don't know what they picked or what they watched overlapping. what i don't know what they picked or what they watched you know yeah i i we have no idea so hopefully they don't overlap probably not considering the amount of media content out there the statistics are pretty low or mm -hmm. are not there but the odds aren't there but never tell me the odds said the next star wars quote all right um but before that let's talk uh let's talk about the week joe how was your week this past week i said week wait, very wait, very busy uh i've had a lot of good time with worship coming back from uh, my vacation with my girlfriend has proved to be a little bit difficult transition back but otherwise um hasn't been too much workload wise i'm sure that'll happen uh, as a teacher that usually happens towards the end of the year kids come out of the woodwork to i gotta please get me from f to some great other than an f uh so that'll happen i'm sure um but then i tell them oh the way to get out of that is build a time machine uh <laughs> Easy yeah you just gotta build a time machine um but uh what i've got going on last weekend actually my girlfriend came up uh and we went to went to outback steakhouse got we tried we had the bloom which is my favorite. Oh, the, the, the bloom and the onion. Bloom. Yeah. The, oh, the bloom of all foods. The steak was great. Steak was much better than the one I had in Grand Canyon. Uh, Grand Canyon one was very well done, even though I didn't ask for that. But Outback Steakhouse never, ever disappoints. Ever. Nothing's better than American <laughs> steak that's themed in Australian. <laughs> uh or at least a faux australian but still great um but not as australian as olive garden is italian <laughs> don't you dare bad mouth olive garden i'm not bad mouthing um, it. it just because it's not authentic italian doesn't mean it ain't it's super good <laughs> yeah uh we also went to explore new haven connecticut uh went to a barcade just happened to pass by and we played the star wars trilogy arcade game from like 1997 like pre phantom menace and it was glorious we uh had a blasty blast uh i missed that game and one day if i retire uh incredibly young that's probably something i would like to buy and have in my household <laughs> one of those be one of those guys with like the game rooms with the cabinets in there oh yeah big just gaming cabinet have dance dance revolution have the star wars trilogy arcade have a uh, need for speed one of those i'm so bad at ddr like yeah. i'm not i'm not good at dance dance revolution i found that out actually not too long ago when i was at an arcade with a few friends mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i thought i was good enough to do above easy i was very wrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> i won't even say we, what level we I ain't tried, good but... no no we just don't have the coordination for that uh some people just have it it's great love watching I, our swimming our time swimming just i'm not used to supporting my own body weight <laughs> gravity is a foreign concept to me we need water to help us out yeah 
If I, I was suspended in water, I think I'd be better. <laughs> swim, swim, revolution. Or right, like how, a how was, synchronized was, swimming version. Um, then lastly, uh, what's coming up, it didn't happen yet, I'm sure. Uh, by the time this video comes out, it would have already happened. Um, running a youth event. Uh, it's our first youth service um leading worship um with uh some other individuals it's going to be great uh me leading two songs and two others uh leading uh other songs as well and i'm very excited because god's definitely going to be moving uh our youth definitely need god more than ever uh and i'm it's going to be a great time i'm I'm excited uh in the past uh in future time hopefully looking back on this yeah so we are hopping in the time machine right now <laughs> Ooh. Spooky. Are we a time capsule? I guess we're technically a time capsule talking in this. In this we are. This, yeah. this format. Hello, people of the future. Maybe even the distant future. Is, I don't know what the thing we do right now. Uh, is Facebook still a thing? I mean, is it really still a thing now? I don't know. That was the wrong question to ask. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, cool, man. But anyway, how was your week? Oh man, I had a I had a packed week actually for the um so lots of things happened. So first I went down to Texas, uh to Dallas, actually Frisco in more in particular, though I found out Frisco used to be kind of separate from Dallas, but now I guess like Dallas has expanded so much it kind of sort of encompasses Frisco. But right. I'm not gonna go, that's not the point of the story. <laughs> um so I went down to Dallas for uh the Young Catholic Professionals Conference. So YCP is a national organization. Uh, that tries to combine like faith with like uh, modern like professionalism so you know like right. networking you get dressed up fancy business that type of thing so it's yeah. a lot about like how to live your faith life within like a secular workforce mm -hmm. um so like how to be a good christian also being like a good business person um which i think is is really awesome um it's, it's very new it's like uh, only 12 years old um the national organization but they're starting up chapters so we're trying to start up a chapter in our diocese in harrisburg mm -hmm. Um, so me and some of the uh, leaders for our up and coming chapter were invited to go down. Awesome conference. It was at a very fancy hotel, uh, like 16 stories, conference center at the bottom, like really nice food, uh, like um, I don't know, it was connected to a humongous mall, that too. I, I don't know. It was just, it was a really fancy hotel. It was a really good conference though. Lots of networking opportunities, really good speakers. The theme was the little way. Um, so St. Therese of Lisieux from, uh, from the Catholic Church, she, uh, she is known as for her little way of like uh, mm -hmm. being holy by doing little things greatly. And like I'm doing little things instead of being doing like great, like big things, mm -hmm. big, like well-known holy things. It's like living a normal life, but like in a way that's very holy. Uh, so that was kind of the theme. And there was like tons of speakers. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to go into like their whole stories, but we had like one guy who was like... Um, um uh, I, I think it's it's been in the news. His name I think was Sam Goodwin. Something Sam. like that. He was like he was this business guy who had a goal to go to every country in the world. But when he got to like 180 out of 190 something countries, he went to Syria and he got kidnapped by Syrian like nationalists, essentially. Yeah. Was the the name rings a bell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, everyone listening, you should go look up that story. I I won't take up too much time talking about it here, but essentially speaking, uh he was held in prison for like a month. Um, and it was like, a, it, it was only through a miraculous circumstance that uh, the terms of his release were negotiated, um, through a very little way. I'm going to leave it at that. So you go, anybody listening, go look it up. Um, cause it's definitely out there cause it was on the news and everything. Um, but it's a, it's an amazing story. Uh, yeah. And then a bunch of others. And we had, once again, network opportunities, lots of Catholic businesses to network with. Um, and now networking, like businessy networking and all that stuff's not really my scene. Um, I've, I kind of found out, especially through this conference, it's not really like my forte. It's not where I feel most comfortable, um, despite the fact I studied business. So, too, uh, like, you know, that's ironic, but I, I, I don't know. And it was ironic because I work for the church now, and I'm really just there as support. Everyone else is very businessy type people, and I was just mm -hmm. like, yeah, I work for the church, which is still has its own business needs, but like, it's not, I don't know. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was different, but it was, but. I was okay with it not being my strength and not feeling super comfortable because my leadership people 
were awesome at it. They were <laughs> super good at networking. They got like so much out of it in terms of like learning from the other leaders. They were learning from, they got to network with national, like the national branch and like all these different vendors and getting all these contacts for helping getting our chapter started. And they just did awesome. Like mm -hmm. it was to hear what they got out of each day and like what they were able to accomplish just made me so like proud and just like, yeah. so like, I don't know. It just made me feel so good. Just like, wow, they're really doing a good job. And like, I could afford to take a step back and just let them work. Cause in mm -hmm. a way I was kind of almost in their way sometimes I think. So I'm just like, I'm just going to let you guys work and just do your thing because yeah. I don't have to be able to do everything, which I sometimes feel like I do. Um, that I just have such amazing people that work with me that can can do such amazing things. So that was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and then today uh, or yesterday, sorry, at this point, this would have been two. So we're recording on Wednesday, so the other day was Tuesday. Um, we got a new bishop, and I got to meet. Uh, his name is um, Bishop uh, Timothy Senior. Got to be there for a press conference. Got to meet him in person. So that was super cool. And mm -hmm. uh, so now it's like a interest in, for the, our our staff and for our, uh, the church. It's a very interesting time because next two months, as he's going to be installed in June, um, it's just going to be a very interesting and um, I don't want to say chaotic, but busy, busy time as we're getting ready for that new leadership. So he's like, he's like my new boss. Any he's like my new time, yeah. Yeah, he's that's it. he is essentially my new boss because I, I technically work for the bishop. So uh, it's, it's it's exciting. It makes you nervous, but like it's it's good. It's good. I'm excited. Um, well, there we go. So sometimes after really uh, packed chaotic, weeks, lots of stuff going on. Sometimes it's good to unwind with some media. So mm -hmm. like, what's some good media that we could recommend to people? or men in general that they could you know unwind with but also still learn a good thing or two about sure so, so what do we want to start with we're actually going to be talking about tv shows movies and podcasts uh specifically what we have picked mm -hmm. uh what or what we, we like, have what we, what we have watched recently mm -hmm. let's just i mean let's go in the order you just said let's go tv show movie podcast sure um, do you want to start us off what what sure. do you pick for your television show sure this is a secular, but I think I've done like secular ones all for today. However, uh, there's a lot of Christian elements that you actually could get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk about some flaws too. So the TV show that just came out in the last two months was a show called Daisy Jones and the Six. It's located on Amazon Prime. So it's based on the best-selling novel from about four years ago by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Daisy Jones and the Six. It's, it's a miniseries, rather, about the rise of a fictitious, I want to make that mental note, um iconic 70s band and uh mm -hmm. a relationship mm -hmm. between its two lead singers so it's based loosely on Fleetwood Mac love that band uh in 1977 the story goes just a little give you a little backstory J Daisy Jones and the Six is one of the biggest bands in the world thanks to their multi-platinum award-winning fictitious album a Aurora which is on Spotify actually good songs after playing a sold-out show, their last one, the band breaks up without telling the public why. 20 years later, 1997, former bandmates, um, Daisy Jones, uh, and I'll go more to the cast later, Billy Dunn, who's the other lead, uh, and then the other various cast members, they individually sit down for interviews and share what was really happening behind the scenes in flashback format. Hmm. Um, yeah. a good flashback show. oh yeah i love it I, I love like interviews and then you go back uh to tell the story and just get more detail as it uh, unfolds uh it's rated 16 plus you know the band they swept the world from interviews you flash back and see how members you know they got to the point where they're at now and they don't really seem in the interviews happy with each other it's sort of a cliche now that i think about it you know sex drugs rock and roll blah 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 is it interesting enough i'd say yes um, it's based on Fleetwood Mac, like I said before, loosely. The music was great. Uh, two very talented actors, Sam Claflin, who played Finnick O'Dare in uh, uh, Hunger oh, I Games. That guy looks familiar. Yeah, uh, and then Riley Keough, who's the granddaughter of Elvis Presley. Uh, never, she never sang before. She was really great. Both spectacular actors of very magnetic chemistry. Uh, However, I think it definitely glorifies or even downplays a bunch of the sins related to sex drugs uh, with certain characters. Not all. For isolated incidents, it's not great. For others, it's it's fine. And it tells more of the 
the um, the bad after effects, let's say. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to hone in on one of the two main leads, the male uh, character, Sam Claflin's uh, Billy Dunn's character, because we do mainly talk about men, and I want to kind of tailor it to that. Billy Dunn is the lead character, leader of the band, then becomes co-lead once Daisy Jones uh, is asked to step in. Billy meets his girlfriend, and then later wife Camilla, as the band is starting to rise and kind of has his own manner of sins regarding uh, that love triangle. Um, yeah, Billy Dunn, he's the lead guitarist and co-founder of The Six in that show. And I want to go into his flaws and then his, um, his strengths. Um, his flaws... Obviously, drug addiction. Billy, he struggled with drug addiction throughout much of his early career, which caused problems for himself and the band. Uh, secondly, anger issues. Billy had a temper, and he was very, uh, very, very hot uh, with and imp impulsive that way with getting his word out. Quick to lash out verbally or even physically, um, which strained his relationships with bandmates and loved ones. Um, I think I touched upon this already, but control issues. He was a perfectionist, uh, which I can definitely um, uh, relate to. He had a tendency to micromanage other people, making it the band his own, which caused tension and resentment among the other members. And then another one that isn't really touched upon too much is unavailability emotionally. Uh, he Billy had difficulty expressing his emotions and connecting with others on an emotional level, which, you know, led to problems in his personal relationships, particularly with his wife and at first his daughter. I'll go into his strengths. Uh, <laughs> musical talent. That's that's a given. Talented guitarist and songwriter and definitely comes into his own once the other female lead Daisy comes into the play. Uh, secondly, determination, um, tenacity. Despite, you know, facing setbacks and personal struggle and having to go into rehab, Billy never gave up on the music and remained committed to the band. Uh, another one is loyalty. He was fiercely loyal. Once he um, bonded with his daughter, everything else became second. You know, uh, loyal to his bandmates as well, would do anything to protect them and keep the band together. Uh, and then growth. You know, he was an ass. He was he was he was not good. He was not a good person at first. You know, throughout the course of you know the novel, because uh, it was a novel at first, but then the uh, book, he, uh, the the movie, he showed growth and maturity, overcoming some of the flaws and learning to be a better partner uh, to his wife. Because he does stay with his wife, who he um, who, who he was unfaithful to uh, at least uh, for for a while. Um, he's flawed, but he's a compelling character who has a lot of, you know, a lot of highs and lows of, as far as that rock and roll life star goes. But he's a reminder of uh, the importance of seeking help and support when struggling with an addiction, the role of community and accountability in the Christian life, the need for grace and forgiveness, right? His wife was a major role in taught and teaching him that and the power of music to move us and connect us to something greater than ourselves that's a lot of info um i'm sure it's been on youtube ads and stuff like that uh for this uh relatively recent show yeah i think i've seen a few ads for it I don't, i've never watched it before but i mean there's mm -hmm. definitely there's a lot of value in shows like that where we start at a place of um like rock bottom or like mm -hmm. characters that are not admirable mm -hmm. um and i think it's and then we see how they grow so like stories of growth i think are important you got to start at a place that's like not good because we none of us who are watching this movie and trying to get something out well, none of us are starting in like a great place either it might not be as bad or the same as what we're watching but this idea is that we all need growth we all need to become better than ourselves so like watching you see parallels yeah we see yes broken people becoming better th than themselves like is mm -hmm. is inspiration especially for us men um yeah so when we start off with perfect characters it doesn't it doesn't resonate as well so like having having characters that grow so nice pick Next, how about you? All right, I'm going to go almost in a completely different direction. So, um, as people know, I like I like sports, and uh, mm -hmm. I like a lot of uh, entertainment about sports. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of people, uh, if you've listened to the podcast already, heard me uh, talk about Ted Lasso at one point. Uh, I'm not picking that. Uh, there is actually, honestly, since I recommended that, some of the episodes that have come out, I'm like, it's starting to go south a little bit and i'm like starting but i'm gonna wait till it's over i'm gonna wait till the whole season's over to make my final judgments but it's uh it's kind of taking a nosedive in my opinion but 
I'm still sticking on the theme of sports. And I'm so actually, and I'm also going, you, you are doing one type of show. This is almost like a complete opposite show. So I'm actually going with an anime. Um, yes, I watch anime for everyone listening. If it's good, I will watch anime. And um, I'm going to recommend this series. It's called Q. So it's H-A-I-K-Y-U-U, Q. Um, it's about volleyball, actually. So it's about a high school okay. volleyball team. <laughs> Um, and I, I recommend it because I think sports are like a really important thing, particularly for men. And I think a lot for young men, because mm -hmm. it's a, a place where we learn a lot, probably learn just as much as we do in the classroom about, uh, brotherhood, about cooperation, yep. um, about hard work and tenacity, um, and what it means to, in a lot of ways, what it means to be a man, like what it means to work for something, to sacrifice for something, mm -hmm. um, to be part of a bigger whole. And all of these themes are kind of in this show. So the show, okay, so the main character, his name is Shoyo Hinata, and he mm -hmm. is short. So he's like, I think, 5'3", or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's, um, But he really wants to play volleyball. He, it's inspired by one day, he's riding down the street, he passes like a TV shop, and he sees on TV, like, um, the high school like national tournament that's happening in Japan. And he sees this kid who's short, who's like playing with, who can like jump really, really high and is able to like play volleyball and be like the top hitter on his team at the national mm -hmm. level, even though he's short. So this inspires this kid to want to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot that happens in between, but essentially uh, he is like works to try to overcome that stature difference, but he meets like a lot of different people along the way. Most importantly, he meets, um, someone who's his age, his name is Tobio Kam Kagiyama, who is like, so Shoyo is very underestimated because he's small and he's like not, he wasn't like officially trained like when he was in middle school or anything like that. So he's, he's like kind of self-taught, but he's just like really, he's like really hardworking and he really wants right. to be good at this. And then, but like Tobio is the opposite. Like Tobio has been like, he's a genius. He's uh, very athletically talented automatically. And he is capable, but he's like the setter. So like he's, he's plays a different position. Um, but, and he's just very capable right off the bat. And right. um, so they have kind of like this rivalry, but they end up going to the same high school where they have to kind mm -hmm. of learn to work together. But they find out through, they each kind of learn through each other things that make them better. So like at yeah. first, uh, like, like show, they both learn to rely on other people and they both learn to like bring the best out of each other because actually their, their particular skills like yeah. kind of match up into this unstoppable force because uh, like like Kagiyama's like technique and talent and brain kind of matches up with uh, Shoyo's like really is like um, he's very athletic like he can jump super high he's really fast but he's got right. like not great technique and like but he's he like tries really hard um, mm -hmm. so like they're they match up and then there's also there's a lot of other people on the team that are all important and it's about them really getting to know each other and learning how to trust each other and really mm -hmm. kind of becoming a band of brothers and kind of defying the odds because their school also is like they used to be a national contender but then yeah. they've kind of fallen by the wayside and become kind of like a mid-tier team and so it's about all of them coming together and then like being able to to get to nationals and compete at that level again and like right. each of them has their own growth story of like they start in one place and then they kind of grow as people mm -hmm. it's just oh, it's just so really well done and it's mm -hmm. very realistic Mm. um in as like an athlete like it all resonated with me and it's not like i'm gonna put it out there right now it's not like that uh one of those shows where it's like oh and then all of a sudden they just like they win all the time it's like no it's like it's very realistic and like the growth of them as athletically and personally is very real and it's um it's paced very well it does a lot of really good characterization even for the other teams um there's just so many good lessons for sports for men um for like teenagers i would say but even just for regular men but like i i do think that it's like a really good show um that just and it's i don't know it's like it's very focused on the sport too there's not a whole lot of extra they don't like do any sort of things to try to i don't know get viewership by like they don't have any like love like storylines or nothing like really serious in that area well, they won't they, 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 yeah yeah they, there's no like romantic element really um there's some like you know they're guys and they have like certain guys have like you know crushes on girls and things like that but it's not really like the main focus um so there's nothing like to detract from the fact that it's really focused on the sport and them as people and so i really enjoy it you can find it on crunchyroll which is where you can find pretty much 
any that anime, or most yeah. anime. So you can check it out there. Um, but it's a really good series. I really recommend it. Um, yeah, I know it's definitely, it's one of the best like sporting based movies or TV shows that I have ever seen. It also really does a good job of making you really that love is, volleyball. That is saying a it's, lot. Yeah. Yeah. Volleyball is, it's, 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 it's very hype. It's also very fast paced when they actually do the games and stuff. It's like very fast paced. It gets you very hyped. Soundtracks like bomb, like love it or like good, not bomb. I do love way, me a good. Like, I do love me a good anime. Lots soundtrack. of bangers, like in the in the soundtrack. So I, I highly recommend it. So that's cool. that was my pick. So nice. where, well, Joe. Speaking of, where can you find um, uh, what is it, Daisy Jones and the Six? Prime. Where, where can you find that on Prime? All right. So we're gonna we gotta tell you where you can find it. We can't just tell you what it is. Um, cool. Good good luck. So yeah, so we got Daisy Jones and the Six and High Q. So. Let's move on to movies. So, Joe, okay. what do you got? Um, so, my girlfriend, about about a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago, uh, she showed me World War Z. I had never seen that. Um, Brad yeah, Brad Pitt came out in 2013. Uh, I believe it was on Netflix. So, we'll give you a little bit of backstory. We have a United Nations investigator uh, played by Brad Pitt. The character's name is uh, Jerry Lane. And his family, um, I believe they're in Philadelphia, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, suddenly, the world is plagued with this, you know, mysterious infection. They're not sure what's going on, turning the population into mindless zombies. Uh, and this is around the whole zombie craze. You know, this is a book also before this. Um, after escaping the chaos, Lane and his family, they... He, he's pers- he's he's told to go on a mission to investigate the disease, and it's a huge trek to find out uh, all across the world. Uh, he encounters a lot of dangers and ultimately uh, comes out on top, at least in the movie is what I'm talking about. But in the book, uh, I can probably go into a little bit of what the... Uh, differences are you know there's it's quite different from the book and takes a more action oriented approach in the in the movie but there's still a few themes and messages that you know a christian worldview man christian worldview can uh can get you know for one thing uh the like the book the movie underscores the value of human life uh and you know Brad Pitt's character, uh, uh, Jerry Lane, he risks his own life to protect his family and others from the pandemic, um, which is great. Um, it also, going off of that, uh, another theme that really pops up is the importance of sacrifice. Throughout that movie, characters make a lot of sacrifices for the greater good, including at the very end, I won't spoil, but Jerry puts himself in danger to find a cure for the pandemic. You know, it's it serves as a really great reminder of you know, the Christian value of sacrificial love and Mm -hmm. the importance of putting others before ourselves. Um, Another thing is, you know, like we put our hope in God, you know, like the book, uh, the power of hope, like the book, the power emphasizes, the the movie emphasizes the power of hope with characters, you know, they work to find a cure for the pandemic and rebuilding for a better future. It, it's a good reminder for us Christians, you know, to hold on to hope even in difficult times and to trust in God's plan for the future. Um, mm. And uh, another theme that pops up is self, uh, the consequences of being selfish, selfishness. It's not a central theme that pops up, but the movie highlights that, you know, selfishness and greed with some characters, you know, with their own interests over the greater good. This serves as like a good reminder of us that uh, we prioritize love uh and selflessness over greed and selfishness overall like the movie was great um but it differs a lot from the book uh it contains these messages that are really wonderful for a christian worldview uh including you know value human life sacrifice hope and um avoiding selfishness Hmm. yeah man those zombie movies back then were super popular i mean it still is zombie stuff is still popular now. i mean with like the last of us and everything coming out oh like, yeah i think it's because i don't know i heard once i read an article um I, I guess it's because especially for a christian it's because you see so much um evil like in the world or so many things going sideways like in the world that feels like the zombies like the zombies kind of represent what feels like the evil in the world that's you know spreading and or trying to get take down humanity essentially yeah. And they corrupt. 
Yeah, it corrupts. Corrupts. Yeah. Like, it's sin. Like, so the zombie virus is just like sin, essentially. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people are drawn to them, because it's like you, you, you feel like you know what it's like to fight that battle. Or like mm. sometimes, especially when you're a Christian and you live in a world that might not super hospitable to Christians, like you can feel you can empathize in, in a certain way or like you can oh, yeah. see like you can feel that struggle um, and that need to work together to like get over this. So, but yeah, so it's a good pick. I, I've never seen it. So like, but you, yeah, I, was I, I kind of a... figured you'd uh, hit some areas that I would not be familiar with Joe. And that's was, what makes I had never seen it before it. this. Uh, and I was just as surprised. I was like, Oh yeah. Forgot that. I never saw that movie. Hmm. Let's put it on. Really? What about you? Well, uh, so actually, I my pick kind of also centers on that theme of self-sacrifice over selfishness and that growth, but in a way that's much more PG, <laughs> literally. Um, as everyone's going to be thinking, it's like, wow, Joe's picking such mature shows and Zach's picking like a child. Um, so what I picked, I watched, rewatched it recently, and I feel like I have to, I have to pick it up to talk about it, is uh, my absolute favorite animated movie of all time. It's Wreck-It Ralph. Um, I know. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever seen it? Yes. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic movie. There are so many themes running through Wreck-It Ralph um, that I could talk for hours about. But uh, the most important one is um, what it truly means to be a hero. Um, like, what does it mean to be a good guy versus, mm -hmm. like, a bad guy? Um, and I think when people watch this, they get confused because they talk about like, there's like the theme at the beginning or like the bad guy affirmation. That's like, I am bad and that's good. I'll never be good. And that's not bad. Like you have to take the words out of it. Cause it's not about morality. Like they're not talking yeah. about morality and like what it like, um, being good versus being bad. It's just about, um, playing your role or like, uh, fulfilling your role. So like their role in the game is to be the bad guy, not like a bad person, but like they're playing the villain. Like, you know, so the game doesn't exist without them. And so everyone's like the whole game depends on everybody's parts, including theirs. Yep. So like, and if they don't do their part, then the game falls apart. Then like, the system breaks. Yeah, exactly. Which is part of what happens in the movie. I won't like describe that, but like this idea is, um, so Ralph's coming to terms with that. And like that he's just because he's playing the role of the bad guy doesn't mean he is a bad person or like that. It doesn't mean that he's not have value, but essentially in the movie. So I guess I forgot to give a synopsis. So Ra wreck it, Ralph, the, t the titular character, um, he's the bad guy in a video game. So this is very toy story esque. So this is like in a world of like, well, what did video get the people in video games were like, like alive and that they kind of just are playing, like they are part of the game during the day, but then at night they kind of like, you know, they have these, these places like within the virtual world where they meet up and everything like that. And they like go, the, the video game is like their job. Um, and so Ralph's a bad guy and he's ostracized because he's the bad guy. So like people don't treat him well because he's the bad guy, essentially. Um, even though it's shown very early on that he's not necessarily like an evil person. Like he's yeah. just kind of a, a guy and he's just being mistreated because of that. Um, and then he has this problem with like, he, he just wants to be accepted. Um, but he's not. So he thinks the key to being accepted is to like win awards that like the, the material things that the heroes get when they win the game. Like that's, that, that's what he thinks being a hero is, is getting the stuff. So that's like where he starts at the beginning. He's like, Oh, if I get a medal, which is like what the heroes get, if I get a medal, then I'll be accepted. Like I will be accepted. Like, so he wants very much, he's material <laughs> mindset, like, uh, the stuff, the results, um, the things of the world type of thing. Yeah. Uh, and I won't go too much into the, the nitty gritty of like each of the steps that he kind of grows with throughout the movie, but eventually gets to the point where he realized that being a good guy, uh, one is not necessarily about everybody accepting you. It's about like the important people in your life accepting you. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's not about getting things, but it's about giving things. Mm -hmm. uh, and most in particularly sacrificing that mm -hmm. what it means to be a hero is not getting anything out of it. It's sacrificing when you don't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, he, and he gets that because he, he meets another video game character named Penelope von Schweetz from a different game um, that also is kind of in a similar situation as he, she's ostracized and like, um, oh. but they kind of form a bond and through that bond and through that friendship, mm -hmm. Ralph kind of learns what it truly means to be a hero. Uh, right. And then by the end, he's able to kind of go back and accept his role as the bad, and everyone else is able to appreciate him in his role of playing the bad guy, not being right. a bad person, but playing the bad guy, and that he's 
um, and that has nothing to do with whether or not he's a good per person or a good guy or whether he's valuable or anything. So it's 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 very deep and layered. And I don't want to go too much into it because I want people to watch it. And there are twists and turns that make it such yeah. a really good movie. It's uh, I love it so much. And there's all there's there's tons tons of different Christian themes in here. Right. I could go over again and again and again. It's a kids movie, yes, but there's lots of deep stuff going on in it. And um, if you really look hard enough as an adult, so mm -hmm. I, I definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, so you can find that on Disney Plus because mm -hmm. it is uh, it's a Disney movie. And there's lots of if you if you ever play video games, which I know a lot of men play video games. There's lots of cool video game references. Of course, too, so of course, especially oh, the classic ones. Where we can... What? Oh yes, especially, especially classic, classic games. <laughs> Wreck It Ralph himself is kind of based loosely on Donkey Kong, whereas Fe Fix It Felix, mm -hmm. like the hero of the game, is loosely based on Mario. Um, so yeah, it's fun. Go watch it. Uh, yeah, on Disney Plus. World, 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 World War Z, I believe, was on Netflix, and um, Wreck It Ralph also Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Just on Disney Plus. If it's Disney, you can guarantee that it's just on Disney Plus. <laughs> Sorry, we're making you pay for a lot of subscriptions at this point. We're up to four. All right. So there's our movie. So let's let's move on well, to our the good news our about uh, paying is you don't have to really pay for any podcasts, at least for and you can just subscribe or follow. Uh, shameless plug. You can actually follow Seizing Valor for free on Spotify or on YouTube. Anywho. Um, exactly. So we're going to go into podcasts. Fix, though. We're not going to no. do that. We're not going to no. do that. Even though we love ourselves. And it's good to love yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go first. The uh, podcast that I would like to showcase uh, for today, one that I followed for at least the last like few years. Uh, it's called Awaken with JP. So the host of that show is JP Sears. Awaken with JP Podcasts. He also has a YouTube channel. Uh, I believe the YouTube channel is just called uh, uh, Awaken with JP. Uh, so that's convenient enough. Um, but uh, yeah, so Awaken with JP podcast uh, is a satirical comedy podcast hosted by JP Sears. He's a comedian, an author, a life coach. Uh, so at first, I want to preface this not explicitly Christian. However, I'm going to go back to that a little bit later and then bring it back into the fold there in a moment or two. Um, there are a few themes and messages that resonate with the Christian worldview. For one thing, I'll start off simple, uh, the importance of laughter. Of course, laughter is a gift from God that has been shown to have like numerous health benefits for one thing. Uh, but the Awaken with JP podcast uses humor in various topics and issues, serves as a reminder to find joy and humor in our daily lives. Two, the dangers of extremism. You know, JP Sears, he, he sat a uh, very satirical uh, way of doing it, but shows extreme viewpoints and ideologies uh, that are satirical on both sides, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. And this can serve as a reminder of the dangers of extremism uh, and how they can be used as an idol. You know, mm -hmm. Christians were called to seek truth, right? And justice. Um, and this should be done at the, ex uh, this should never be done. Sorry should never be done at the expense of love and compassion for others, uh, which is ultimately something that he urges. Uh, he also stresses the importance of reflection on the self. J.P. Sears, he's known for, you know, self-deprecating humor, for one thing, and, and willingness to poke fun at himself, too, uh, in addition to the world. But this can serve as a reminder to engage in self-reflection over our flaws and limitations. Uh, and then lastly, you know, diverse perspective. You know, the... The podcast covers a wide range of topics, uh, features guests from diverse backgrounds, too, uh, and can serve as a reminder to, you know, listen with an open mind and heart. Um, so like I said before, not explicitly Christian. However, let me go back to that in a second. It contains themes about um, uh, dangers of extremism, laughter, like I said before, reflecting on the self and diverse perspective. Now, let me go back to the Christian part. Uh, and something that made me respect him even more. He came out with a video maybe about a month ago, said, uh, I changed my mind about God and here's why. So he kind of goes into this um, long testimony um, about how he was not, um, I think it was more agnostic, but I'd have to go back to it. But then as the last few years with the pandemic uh, were rising and a lot more people were becoming disillusioned rather, you know, 
he rediscovered his faith. You know, uh, he grew up in a very, um, oh, you know, we have this, I'm not, I'm not saying him in particular, but you have a lot of people in the world that grew up in religious families, you know, they turn themselves off from religion, go atheist, agnostic, or just spiritual, and start dabbling in entertainment. Uh, uh, and the idea maybe, you know, of, and even paganism too. A lot of people like, they lose themselves, you know, and then uh, seeing this, uh, and I looked at the comments of that video, and I'm just so inspired um, that, for one thing, it's going to influence his content for the rest of his career, um, and I think it'll truly save people. So I, I, I really got to hand it to him that he's um, coming out with that in on a platform such as YouTube that doesn't exactly... Um, uh, not support, but uh, just doesn't elevate it enough. Mm. So. Mm. It's powerful stuff. Anybody's witness, especially on a public stage, can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. so I hope he continues to follow God in his life mm -hmm. and inspire others. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Yeah, and he's and he's got a career. He never he has never mocked Christianity ever. Uh and this video, he I think he prefaces uh th that YouTube channel video. He never uh he he never does this, but for this video in particular, he said like this is not a satirical video at all. It's just a testimony. Um and so many people um responded so well to it. It was it, it was beautiful to see. I just couldn't help but I, I don't like looking at comments, but this one, nothing was better than reading those testimonies from other people in the comments. Awesome. So man. Cool. All right. Amen. Yeah. How about you? God is good. Um all right, so I'm once again going in a little bit different direction. This is not a comedic podcast. Um so I uh I decided to go with uh, Restore the Glory. Um, it is a um, it's a podcast hosted by uh, so Jay Kim and Bob Schutz, Doctor Bob Schutz. Um, they are both Catholic Christian therapists, and they just dive really deeply into this podcast about um, just a lot of different um, psychology oriented things like just woundedness essentially so they try to combine mental health and spirituality like so the spiritual because there's elements of both we're an interconnected species like everything about it, our mind body and soul are all interconnected they're not independent mm -hmm. of each other they're all interconnected so they're um taking uh, mental health and taking everything that they know and as therapists and combining it with everything they know as catholic christian men sure. and um using that to help heal wounds so to speak so we're all wounded in some way and like we all suffer from wounds and they just they cover a variety of different topics i know i especially like listen to them uh with stuff on pornography um and the the damages of pornography and healing from pornography they don't even just talk about like why things are damaging or like the the science behind different like why you're the way you are how or, to like, heal how to better how yeah. to heal yes and the importance of um both these everything that's in therapy like therapy like um but as well as uh incorporating those things with faith um and how god like our relationship with god um can help with that i'm doing a very injustice to like they would be able to describe it much better someone else would probably be able to describe it much better i just know it is super effective i've learned so much about myself um i've learned so much about how to, like my own wounds and how to heal from them or even how to deal with or manage them um, and to look at them in ways I didn't ever realize before and just how to let God heal me and um, how to let, open myself up and let God heal these different wounds. Um, so there's so many, I mean, they have up to like 81 episodes as of today uh, mm -hmm. and there's just so many different topics um, and all so good. Um, they even have guests every once in a while. As I said, like, I know one of the things I particularly got helpful for help with um, was with pornography, listening to some of their stuff on that. Um, and then even when I was having a lot of my struggles with mental health, like a year ago, when I was like really in the throngs of anxiety, um, a lot of their stuff um, was helpful to me. Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, you if you 
I every everyone and anyone can get something out of what they talk about. Like any of those of any one of those episodes, because I think everybody should know about a lot of this stuff. But then if anything, you can find an episode on there that's going to speak to you and that's going to mm-hmm. help you um, and help you feel. And they're just they're two very good Catholic Christian men that are just really doing the Lord's work um, and bringing mental health to the to the forefront and um, that this is important um, and that there is a spiritual element to it, that it's not. Mm-hmm this or that it's this and that like mm, mm. um so i think that's really important so yeah so that that's what i got so look it up people i mean once again scroll through the list i'm sure something will stand out to you and um just listen and um just open your heart and let the lord let the lord work and let him let him heal you like sh- so you can show him your wounds so that he can help you help you heal so yeah, that, that yeah, that's very different than what you were saying about the comedy. But comedy is healing too. Laughing is healing too. So, um, so yeah, both of those you can find probably anywhere that you can find podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally like to. Joe, where do you like to listen to podcasts? I like to listen to podcasts on Spotify, uh, not necessarily Apple. If they have it on YouTube, I just have it because it's YouTube. Even though you have to keep YouTube open the whole time. I do Apple. I do Apple podcasts, so that's just it works easy for me. Um, so there you have it. There are our picks. Um, some things, if you have some time and you're looking for something to watch or listen to, we have our thoughts. Um, yeah, and always, if you have a spare moment, just one plug after another, you can always listen to us and our golden pipes, and uh, and just sit down and have a have a little fireside chat with your good buddies, Josh and Joe and Zach depending on the episode, two, at least two out of three. <laughs> so as I said, you can find us on Spotify and YouTube. Please uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon, you know, whatever the platform asks you to do. If there's a button, press it, please. Um, except maybe the dislike button. Don't press that one. Uh, but if there's a button, press it. Follow us. Um, you know, if you want to have a conversation with us, you can email us. If you don't want to do it in the comments, you can email us uh, at seizingvalor at gmail.com. If you want to see what we're up to between episodes or just get little previews of our episodes or little snippets of them, you can find us on social media, on Instagram in particular, uh, at seizingvalor is our handle. Um, yeah, so just please um, yeah, support the channel and uh, share with whoever you think uh, needs what we have to say. Um, and check out all of these resources we, we just told you about if you're interested. Uh, is there anything else I forgot, Joe? No, I think we're all set, dude. All right. So pray us out, man. Yeah. Let's bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much for this day. And thank you so much for this conversation. This fireside chat is uh, Zach so eloquently put. Um, there, there's so much uh, to unpack uh, from this, and there's so much that a lot of people can get out of this. And um, I get out of this so much each and every time uh, that Zach and uh, Josh and I chat. Um, and for one thing, with this uh, topic in particular with media, um, there, there's so many distractions, for one thing, that come up, up and about uh, in our lives. So much noise, God that creeps up uh whether loud or or soft god and eventually like if we're not careful that whisper uh that you have that you for us um kind of deafens um and i i pray that um everyone who's listening to this right now would would experience that uh whisper and then you just uh, slowly have us be louder and louder and louder um until you know you're the only thing that we're, we're we're thinking about god you know with with these last few years of just you know uh more and more distractions coming up uh that we've noticed uh so many things designed to disconnect us from people uh and families god uh and and, and you god um we're living in a time where you know so many Christian themes in media are just taken out, God, uh, and more, becoming more and more radical, God. And I pray that, like, we can see the wholeheartedness uh, in media and, you know, look at things, you know, like with a bird's eye, uh, 
or you know fly on the wall perspective to, in order to gain you know the the christian elements of that but if there's anything that's you know not according to your plan for us god that we would you know see that look at it from afar um uh, critique it um and be unavailable to that corruption god um and i pray that we can as a medium be uh, an encouraging message to other men and other uh, just people in general, God, uh, and to lead uh, them closer to you, God, and give you the glory. We give you the glory, God. Uh, in your most precious and holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. As always, uh, I'm Joe, and this is Zach, and uh, we will see you all next week. Take care. Peace.